Tyler King, Denver Gazette. Kyle, and I was asking Jeff Green earlier about kind of your battles with him in college in Georgetown Villanova days. I'm just curious if you remember those battles and just kind of what it's been like to <clears throat> play against Jeff throughout your respective careers. Uh, they weren't really battles. We won every game that I played against them. <laughs> nah, man, it was, uh, you know, those, those, that Georgetown Villanova rivalry goes a long way, goes back a long way. Um, the respect that the two universities have for each other is awesome. Um, the, the professionals, the pros that they both, you know, made. Um, so, uh, but, you know, just being able to have a guy who's been in the league now 16 years, um, a guy that I played against in college, um, you know, just kind of, you know, him going through his heart stuff, just to be able to see him, you know, have this opportunity on the stage and be able to still be playing basketball at this high level is uh, it's a pretty cool story for him. And, you know, just, you know, you just kind of appreciate a guy like him for all the things that he's been through and still with doing it, you know, at a high level. Third row in the middle. In the, the Denver Post, I know you guys have seen Denver since November of, of 21 when the, the incident happened here, but I'm curious, what do you remember, especially about the, the post game in that, I mean, was that, I'm guessing it had to be sort of a unique scenario. And then at this point, is there any lasting animosity? Um, I think it was just something that, you know, it was a, it was a heated moment. Um, you know, you know how to, it hurt a teammate of ours. And, you know, we wanted to have his back. And we always, at that time, you know, we're going to always have our teammates back um, in, that, in that moment. But, um, you know, and, and I don't think there's anything festering. You know, we're at a different level. Um, you know, we understand it's, it's about winning four games right now. You know, anything that had hap has happened in the past is things that, you know, that's, we can't control right now. <laughs> we got to worry about winning basketball games, and that's all that really matters. On the right side, second row. Kyle, Matt Moore, Action Network. Both in Toronto and here in Miami, you've been a part of teams that defensively, you guys can do almost anything, zone, switch, all these different coverages. What does it take from – the players to be able to play that style when so many teams can't? Uh, belief in, in trusting your coach, honestly, you know, and belief in one each, one each other. Um, being able to switch, you know, from zone to man to whatever you want to trap, double team, doing different things. You got to be able to have a, a sharp mind and be in the moment. You got to be able to say, okay, whatever coach needs, I can do or will do. Um, and it's just, you know, it's fun to be able to switch things up, change rhythms. You know, because sometimes, you know, you just got to do something different. And which in Toronto, we did that. And in Miami, we're doing that now. We're switching up and doing different coverages, different things. And the versatility that we have on this team is, is pretty remarkable. On the left side, second row. Hi, Kyle. Good to see you. Josh Moser from Channel 7 in Miami. You're one of the few that have been here and that have won it at this level. How much does that experience help and how do you use it in the series? Um, I think it will help a lot. Um, you know, but we also got a head coach who's been doing it a long time, also has been here more than me. Um, but I think just for me and in this moment with these guys, I'll be able to help just kind of keep our focus, stay here. And, you know, we got also got Udonis Haslam who's been here, who has three rings also. Um, but I think we're just prepared mentally just to stay stable no matter what happens. And it's kind of been our season the, the, the whole year, just being here and staying in the moments. On the left side, fourth row. Tanya Ganguly, New York Times. Um, why do you think, what, what have you learned about Jimmy's personality playing with him? And why do you think it's worked so well with this team? <laughs> um, his personality is very different. Um, he's one of a kind. Um, but how he treats his teammates, he treats his friends, um, it's, it's like no other. And I think that's what helps us, you know, as a group. You know, he may say some things or he may do some things that, you know, you might be like, oh, whoa. But it, he, it's coming from the best part of his heart. And when you got a guy like that and you respect him at, at that level and knowing that he's willing to do whatever it takes to win basketball games and treat you at, at a high level, you know, he's our leader. So we just follow him. You know, you just mentioned, like, he'll do some things sometimes where you're like, whoa, but then you know it's coming from a good place. Yeah. How do you know that? Because we're around him every single day, <laughs> unfortunately. But fortunately. Right. But being around him, you just get to learn the guy and just learn his true his true love for the game and his true love and for, for winning and, and for you as an individual. We're going to take two more questions. David Aldridge. Kyle. What up, DA? What's up, sir? Hey, man. Chill. Hey, I'm going to take you right back to 2011. Damn, dog. You're aging me so bad. Uh, Max, how, Max was still in high school. Think, think how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> when you were in Houston, you had a, you had a rookie teammate named Ish Smith. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and 
issues finally in the finals. I just wonder what you remember about that year with him. He used to embarrass me and Aaron Brooks in practice. Too fast, couldn't keep up with him. I ain't gonna lie, I used to dislike having to go like really live practice against him. Um, but if you go back and people go look at his journey and the, the things he's been through um, to finally get to this point of getting to the finals, you know, I just, I can't wait to just see him and say hello. And every time I see him, you know, he was, he still called me vet. Um, you know, he just, he was just a good kid, you know, coming out of Wake Forest. You know, he wasn't the best shooter, but can get anywhere on the floor at any time, any moment. Um, he was always a special kid and a special guy. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just have these stories that people should look into because his story is a very unorthodox story. And, um, you know, I'm sure he's happy to be in this moment. Final question on the left side. Joseph Kachar, the scorer. Kyle, so much is made about this team's resilience, and especially this year because the run you've gone on as an eight seed. And I was just curious, now you being in in a couple years, is how would you define heat culture? Because it's one thing for us to talk about it or write about it, but as someone in it, like how would you define it? What separates this organization from others? I think we just don't care about what others think. I think we do what we do no matter what. Um, I think we work hard no matter you know, the time, the place, the situation. Um, I think we prepare ourselves and we're well prepared um, to go into any situation, no matter where it is, what time, um, anything. We're, we're prepared to do it. And I think we have, the, and, and the culture is just about believing, and we believe in what we do every single day, every night, the work we put in. Thank you, guys. Thank you.